So here I am in the NX session, and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a sketch. I'm just going to quickly draw out a profile. And the one thing you'll notice when we complete the boundary is that we now get a shaded area to show that we have a completely closed sketch profile. This shading is controllable and can be toggled on and off in an option underneath the view tab. On exiting the profile command you'll notice that the curves themselves change colour. This light brown depicts that all of these curves are currently movable objects within the sketch. The ability to show these movable objects is a toggle within the sketch task environment. This provides great visual feedback to the designer so they understand what can be moved, modified or repositioned in the current active sketch. Other items you may well have noticed in the graphics window are the horizontal and vertical axes of the sketch plus the sketch origin point. All of these can be actively used during sketch definition. For example, you might want to define the position of the sketch with a dimension from both the horizontal and vertical axes. I'm sure you'll have also noticed the on-screen dialog right at the top middle portion of the graphics area. This is where you can define relations, including persistent ones. And again, we shall take a look at that during this demonstration. But let's continue by taking a look at some of the basic interaction within the new sketch tool. So we'll leave our closed profile for a second and just create a couple of lines. These are both movable objects and if I just select and drag anywhere on the line then you can see I can move their position but still maintain the angle and length. If however I want to change the length or the angle of the curve, then I can do this by selecting the end point of the curve as you can see and then dynamically dragging it to a new position. Other sketch interaction we talked about earlier was object action and action object. And let's take a look at an example of both. The first example will be object action. We're going to select these two lines and make them parallel. So I select the first line, the second line, and then the make parallel relation from the on-screen dialog. What you'll notice is the first line I select is the one that moves to be parallel to the second line. You'll also notice that when I select the end point of one of the lines, the relation is shown graphically. You'll also see that as I drag the line around, the relation is maintained. So how about if you want to remove the relation? Well, that's straightforward too. You select the end point of the line, the relation is displayed, you select the relation, it turns pink, which means it's relaxed, and then you can go ahead and move the line away from parallel. So what about action object? Well, let's make these two lines perpendicular. So I select the perpendicular relation, I select the first line, the second line, the first line becomes perpendicular with the second, but as the lines are not touching, it means that the perpendicular relation is not maintained. For this particular condition, we need to make a persistent relation. You can see the persistent relation is now graphically displayed. And this display can be controlled with a toggle in the sketch task environment. And now when we drag one of the lines, the relation is maintained. And it doesn't matter which line we select. And when you want to remove the persistent relation, you just select it and delete it. So let's take a look at some more sketch interaction. But first of all, I'm going to turn off the create persistent relation command. So this time we're going to create a circle. So again, pick, drag to get the size of the circle. And then when I select the circle itself, you see two selection points. 
a point on the circumference of the circle and the arc center. The selection point on the circumference of the circle allows me to dynamically drag the size of the circle, whereas the point of the arc center allows me to reposition the circle itself. I can also reposition the circle by just clicking and dragging on the circumference too without ever accessing the selection points. I'm now going to add an inner circle and notice when I complete the command that the area shade is slightly darker. This is useful because it helps distinguish between an outer and inner profiles. You'll also notice if you added more and more inner profiles that the shading would get slightly darker each time. Now when I select the outer circle a new found relation is displayed. It's an offset, something new in the latest release of NX. If I then drag the circle, notice that that offset is maintained. Again, I have the opportunity to relax that relation if I want to. So again, I select it, it turns pink, and we can then modify the inner profile without maintaining the offset. However, if I modify the inner circle, so that it's closer to the size of the outer circle, the solver again finds the offset relation because the solver is continuously evaluating the sketch. So let's just drag these two circles to the top right of the graphics area and concentrate on our original profile. One topic we're yet to discuss is dimensioning. With the new solver continuously evaluating the sketch and the found relations, Dimensions are key to achieving a fully defined sketch. I am sure you will already have noticed that every time I select a curve within the sketch, a dimension appears. The dimension is a temporary one, unless I select or reposition it, at which stage it becomes an active dimension. You also see that after making it active, I get further graphical displays of found relations, such as horizontal, vertical, and tangent conditions. As I continue to add dimensions, you'll notice on this line that I have three dimensions, which tells me it's not vertical. I have an offset dimension, a vertical height dimension, and also the physical length of the line. I can then choose which of the dimensions I want to make active. I now continue to add further dimensions to my profile. One thing to note, some of the dimensions have an approximate symbol in front of them. This denotes the fact that the actual value of the dimension is greater than the one decimal place that's shown. If I double click on the dimension to edit it and type in a whole number, you'll notice that now the approximate sign disappears. Alternatively, if I double click another dimension to edit it and set its value to three decimal places, then the approximate sign will appear for that particular dimension. A new and more interactive way of editing a dimension size is to use the drag arrows. If I double click on the dimension, there's an arrow either side and I can use each arrow to dynamically edit the length of that particular line. If design intent dictates, we can make the dimension directional. Using mouse button 3 over the arrow, we can force the direction of the dimension. In this case, we're only able to drag it to the left side. If you remember, the line on the left hand side wasn't vertical, so we'll add a vertical relation. We select a point on the profile and now you see all of the graphical displays of the relations shown. And it'll actually tell you in the tooltip whether it's a found relation or a persistent one. Again, if need be, we can change the direction of that one dimension. We reverse it to go the other way and we make a design change. One unique aspect of dimensioning in the new sketch tool is that it doesn't automatically create you an expression. You have to specifically add or in some cases remove an expression. 
and this is done using mouse button 3. This makes sense because why would you want the overhead of managing numerous expressions if you're only ever going to use one or two to assist you with your design intent. So here you can see I've added an expression to that horizontal dimension and it's now displayed in the graphics window. Also note that the dimension changes color. This also denotes the fact that it now has an expression. So how do we go about removing an element from a sketch profile? Well, if you remember in the presentation, I discussed shake and break. And we can select the curve, wiggle the mouse, and it now breaks that particular element away from the sketch profile. And as that profile is now open, the shading has been removed. You'll also notice, however, that the line that we broke away has still retained its dimension. If we decide that we don't really want this line to be broken away, we can just simply reattach it. And again, our boundary is complete and the shading reappears. The sketch curves are still colored brown, which means the sketch is not fully defined and we can continue to drag and move the sketch around. So I'll continue to dimension my sketch. Notice as I place the dimensions, some of the curves start to change color, turn to black, which means they're fully defined. I continue to add dimensions. And again, more and more of the curves are colored black. One more dimension should do it. And when I place my radial dimension, my sketch profile is now fully defined. So I've removed the other curves that I don't really need. And now I'm happy to finish and exit the sketch task. And you'll notice in the part navigator, the status of the sketch is fully defined. So that's the end of the first demonstration, looking at the basic interaction with the new sketch tool.